Hi everyone, in this video clip, I'll be going through a new chapter based on hypothesis testing. It will be topic 19 for H2 students and it will be topic 13 for the H1 students. In this particular video clip, I'll be introducing to you this topic on hypothesis testing, which is either 19.1 for H2 or 13.1 for H1. Before we actually go into this proper statement on hypothesis testing, we need to know this thing called statistical hypothesis. And that is actually a hypothesis that statisticians usually will try to write down before they do any research. So the statistical hypothesis is basically an assumption, claim or statement concerning the population mean. In fact, uh, it actually can concern any other thing like say population variance or, or any other things. But in our A-level syllabus, we will be only be focusing testing or hypothesis involving the population mean. Okay. Now, the hypothesis that the person make a claim can be true or can be false. And we usually test its validity by using a sample data okay, that is collected from the population. So that means that when we want to determine whether a statistical hypothesis is true or false, we will actually take a sample from the population and we will study the sample. Okay? And then making a decision whether our statement is true or false. There are generally two types of hypotheses. The first is this thing called null hypothesis. And the other is called the alternative hypothesis. There will always be two hypothesis statements in any research problem. The null hypothesis we usually denote as H0. Okay, it says that it's a statement that there is nothing happening, generally thought of as status quo or no relationship, no difference. Usually, the researcher hopes to disprove or reject the null hypothesis. For example, it could be easily be H0 is the population mean height of individuals in Singapore is say 1.62, for example. And alternative hypothesis is a statement that something is happening. So H1 is the notation to represent alternative hypothesis. And generally, it's what the researcher hopes to prove. And a statement that assumes that the status quo is false, or there is a relationship, or there is a difference. For example, we may be testing that mu equals 1.62 against mu greater than 1.62. That means the researcher believes that the average height of individuals in Singapore has increased from what is believed to be originally stated. Or we may actually be testing mu less than 1.62, that means believing that this is an overestimate okay, of the true height of individuals. Or the person is not certain, the person is just testing whether there is any change from 1.62 meters. So generally, there are three types of hypothesis, alternative hypotheses that you can use depending on what you're looking for as a researcher, okay? And this type of test, where you're testing for definite increase or definite decrease, is what we call a one-tail test. One-sided, actually. And for this kind of situation, when we're testing for change, we are actually what we call a two-tail test. Now let's look at some examples that is given in your handouts. It says that Kelly claimed that the average number of talk time used by phone users in Singapore is 20 minutes per day. Test whether this value is underestimated. So we can actually say that in the first example, we can say that let mu be the mean talk time okay, per day. So your null hypothesis will be mu equals 20 minutes. 
And your H1 is that because you are testing whether this value is underestimate, we are testing whether mu can be greater than 20 minutes or not. So this will be a null hypothesis and this will be the alternative hypothesis. Let's take a look at the second example. Okay, the second example says that a teacher in a primary school claimed that the average number of hours spent on a computer by P6 students is 8 hours. Many students disagree with her claim. So we can say that let mu be the mean okay, number of hours spent by P6 students Okay, on a computer, on a computer, in a day. So in this case, the H0 will be mu equals 8 hours. And because many students disagree with her claim, you are testing whether it is really 8 hours or not. So we are testing whether mu equals 8 versus mu not equals 8 hours. Okay? And let's take a look at the third example. The third example says that a doctor claimed that the average number of hours of sleep among the elderly is at least 12 hours. Test whether the doctor's claim is true. Okay? Now in this case, this person, doctor, actually claims that the mean is 12 hours at least either greater than 12 hours or equals 12 hours. But the issue here is that your null hypothesis is always an equality. Okay? And your H1, therefore, is going to be disputing this claim. But because mu is already agreeing with the doctor's claim, okay, so your H1 has to be less than 12 hours. So that means that if H0 is not rejected, then the doctor's claim is true. But if H0 is rejected in favor of H1, then the doctor's claim is not true. Okay? So some people may actually think that shouldn't we actually be using H0 as mu equal to 12 hours and H1 as mu greater than 12 hours. In that case, Whichever the case, whether you accept H0 or accept H1, the doctor's claim will be true. So that would never be possible because in that case, the doctor's claim is forever true. Your aim of hypothesis testing is to test whether a person's claim is true or not. Okay? Now let's look at some more uh, definitions which is important before you do your hypothesis testing. Now, the first concept is this thing called test statistic. Besides the now and alternative hypothesis. After you have studied the hypothesis statements, we are next going on to this term called test statistic. What is test statistic? Test statistic is defined as the value obtained from the data set. So it's obtained from a data set. Okay. And that is compared with the statistical distribution to determine whether the data set differs from the expected under the null hypothesis. That means it's actually a test statistic that depends on what you obtain from the sample. And you are going to use these values to determine whether the null hypothesis is true or false. And in our situation, if we are testing for population mean, We are focusing on testing our population mean because this is just part of our syllabus. Then our x bar will follow normal, the mean mu variance sigma square over n. Whether it's an approximation, if n is large, or it's exact when x is actually following a normal distribution. So then we can actually use a possible test statistic in this case, which is z equals x bar minus the mu divided by sigma over square root n. 
Uh, this will be the test statistic that can be used in this case. Okay? And you can see from this formula of test statistic, it measures the difference between x bar and mu. Okay? So if x bar that you obtain from the data set is far away from the population mean, then of course we will tend to reject the null hypothesis. If the x bar is close to the population mean, then of course it will actually be likely that we do not reject H0. Okay? And that is about the test statistic. You need to calculate the test statistic for the given data set. Okay? Then what is the next concept? There is this thing called level of significance. Okay, now level of significance says the following: If H naught is wrongly rejected when it's supposed to be true, then the probability of wrongly rejecting H naught, probability of wrongly rejecting H naught, okay, is actually what we call the level of significance, which is we denote as alpha. Okay, now you look between this test statistic and this level of significance, then you will be able to see the link. Okay, because we all know that data sets actually can be taking any values in the case of population. When we take a sample, okay, whatever the case, how good your sample is, is just a representation. So it may not be actually the perfect representation of the population mean, but it's just an estimate. So when you do make use x bar as an estimate for population mean, there could be a chance that you happen to take a sample that is not really representative of the true population mean. Okay? So then at the end of the day, we may accidentally reject the null hypothesis. For example, I just give a simple example. We want to test whether the population mean height of individuals in Singapore is 1.62. If we happen to take a group of people, and we shall probably say very, very tall, maybe basketball players, your x bar will probably be like 1.8 on average. And then when you find the difference and divide it by sigma over square n, and you found that it's actually very, very far away from the population mean. And then we decide, let's reject H0. But you are making, could be making, me, making a wrong decision because your sample that you draw happens by randomness, take a group that is mostly the basketball players. So when you make such an error, that error has to be controlled by this thing called level of significance, which is the probability of making a wrong decision by rejecting the null hypothesis. And that level of significance by statistical standard is usually between 1%, okay, probably to 10% on average. Okay? Most of the time, we are testing for 1%, 5%, or 10% level of significance. Okay? That means how much risk can we take in wrongly rejecting H0. Okay? Now we go on to the third concept. There is this thing called critical region. Now what is actually critical region? Now, the critical region is the set of values of Z that results in the rejection of H0. Because with the test statistic and with amount of risk that we can take in wrongly rejecting H0, we must have a cutoff that once the Z value falls into the region of values, then we should reject H0. Critical region really refers to that region which makes us decide to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so therefore, critical region refers to those values which actually leads to a rejection of the null hypothesis. And the values that lies on the boundary of the critical region are what we call the critical values. And this critical region depends on what kind of test you are doing. If your H1 is mu not equal to mu not, then the critical region that you'll be expecting will be the two ends of the region. And this Z0, of course, is the value that we are going to calculate later on. 
And if your H1 is mu greater than mu naught, then your critical region will be only one side. Okay? And if your H1 is mu less than mu naught, it will be the other side, the left side. So depending on whether what is the hypo alternative hypothesis, we will have to determine our critical region. Okay? And probably it will be clearer once we go through examples in subsequent video clips. Okay? Let's go on to the final concept of this hypothesis testing. There is this thing called p-value. Now, what is p-value? p-value is the smallest level of significance level, or significance level, alpha, for which the null hypothesis would be rejected. So the null hypothesis is rejected if the p-value is lesser than the level of significance. Okay? So that means that the p-value is going to be, if it's smaller than the level of significance, then we reject H0. We will study a little bit more about the p-value uh, in the next video clip. Okay? So with that, we end this video clip. Okay? And thank you.